Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Basil Rathbone and Nigel Bruce in the new adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Suspense. The adventures of Sam Spade, Detective. Dragnet. And now, Gangbusters. Welcome to the Film Detective Podcast, where we bring you theater of the mind programming from the golden age of radio. I'm your host, Carl Amari. This time, it's George Burns and Gracie Allen with their special guest, Ronald Reagan, in a radio broadcast from 1950. Stick around. We'll be right back. You wouldn't know the truth if it followed you, mister. Creator and star Jack Webb is here to bring you just the facts, ma'am, in Dragnet. Webb stars as Sergeant Joe Friday in a police detective drama so action-packed it made its way across radio and television and motion pictures. We're bringing you over two dozen episodes of Dragnet right here on The Film Detective. Real-life married couple George Burns and Gracie Allen performed a comedy routine with Gracie as the zany woman and George as the straight man. Millions of radio listeners truly believed Gracie was as clueless as she sounded, which was a tribute to both her comic brilliance and the top-notch scripts. For two decades, the duo had a weekly following on radio, which culminated with a decade-long television show. George and Gracie continually revised their act, moving from vaudeville crossfire to full stage situation comedy. At first, their characters were not romantically linked with George's character pursuing Gracie's. By 1942, the program evolved into a husband and wife situation comedy series with occasional guest stars. The couple transitioned to TV in 1950. In 1958, Gracie retired, and after her passing, George kept himself busy by acting in films. He earned an Oscar for his role in The Sunshine Boys and starred as God alongside John Denver in the Oh God films. In the radio broadcast we're about to hear, George is rehearsing his Friars Club speech in honor of Ronald Reagan, who some 31 years later would become the 40th president of the United States. Here's the Burns and Allen show. Are you reducing tooth decay with Amident ammoniated toothpaste? Well, answer the man, George. Of course, Gracie. I use Amident twice a day. You can smile when you say that. <laughs> yes, it's the Amident Show, transcribed in Hollywood and starring George Burns and Gracie Allen. With our special guest, Ronald Regan, yours truly, Bill Goodwin, B. Benaderet, Hal March, Marvin Miller, Harry Lubin, and the Amadent Orchestra. For healthy laughter, it's George and Gracie. And for healthier teeth, for fewer cavities, it's Amadent Toothpaste. <laughs> The theatrical club to which George Burns belongs, the Friars, is giving a testimonial dinner for movie star Ronald Reagan, and George is going to be one of the speakers. We find him now preparing his speech. Gracie, I've got a very funny opening. Would you like to hear it? I'd love to. <clears throat> Friars, friends, Toastmaster, and honored guest Ronnie Reagan. As I look at our guest of honor, I'm reminded of a story. It seems oh, George, that you... I heard a terribly funny story that would make a great opening for your speech. <laughs> oh, I just uh, it. Look, I've got an opening. Um, <laughs> as I look at our... Uh, Gracie, please. Oh, I can't help it, George. It's the funniest story I ever heard. <laughs> well, if it's that funny, let's hear it. Oh, I wish I could remember it. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll use the opening I've got. You as know, I look it at our... Seems it seems a shame to have to write a whole new speech. Why don't you just change the name and use the same speech you made for Sophie Tucker? Brilliant idea. I'll say, um, tonight we pay tribute to Ronnie Regan, the last of the Red Hot Mamas. 
Gracie, what I said about Sophie Tucker wouldn't fit Ronnie Regan. No, huh? No. You see, one was discovered singing in a restaurant and the other playing football. Oh, really? Where did Sophie play football? <laughs> For Notre Dame. Oh, oh, you're right. That wouldn't fit Ronnie. Oh, no, no, no. For your information, Gracie, Ronnie was an outstanding back. Well, Sophie's outstanding on both sides. <laughs> Uh, look, what I need is some facts about Ronnie's life so I could finish this speech. You know, I, I can tell you what the girls at the beauty shop say about Ronnie Regan. Some of them have dated him. They have? Huh? Mm-hmm. You know how girls feel about handsome movie stars. Sure. Well, I found out handsome movie stars feel the same way about girls. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine Ronnie's popular with the girls. Yeah, well, you know, it's hard to decide who's more popular, Ronnie or Bill Goodwin. It's neck and neck, huh? Every night. <laughs> yeah, let it go. Well, have I been a help to you, George? Tremendous. Oh, I'm Tremendous. glad. I, I wanted to put you in a good mood before I told you about the dream I had last night. What was that? Well, I dreamt that you bought me a 1950 Cadillac, and I bought you a necktie. <laughs> that was a nice dream. Yeah, here's the tie. <laughs> well, I've kept my end of the bargain And now I'm supposed to buy you a Cadillac Well, sure, because I dreamt it and dreams come true Well, tonight you can dream that I've changed my mind <laughs> uh, Forget the whole idea But, George, this isn't my idea It came from my subconscious mind There's another one? <laughs> Look, honey, I wasn't born yesterday I know that Come in well, Blanche Morton. Hello, Gracie. Hello, George. Hiya, Hello. Blanche. I just had to come over and tell you the dream I had about you two last night. About us, Blanche? Yes. I dreamt that George bought you a 1950 Buick. A Cadillac. <laughs> oh, that's right. Cadillac. <laughs> no. Yes. Well, that's remarkable. I had exactly the same dream. No. Yes. <laughs> Have you two Dolly sisters finished your act? <laughs> well? Act? I know you cooked this up. Cooked it up? What do you think I am, a jerk? You better take that one alone, Gracie. I'm liable to ad lib you right into a Ford. <laughs> Look, Rosie and Jenny. <laughs> I'm not even getting a Ford, so relax. And as long as you're here, Blanche... I'd like you to listen to the opening of my speech. Oh, it's for the Ronnie Regan dinner at the Friars Club, Land. All right. <clears throat> Friars, friends, Toastmaster, and honored guest Ronnie Regan. As I look at our guest of honor, I'm reminded of a story. It seems oh, that... Oh, two... George, I heard a wonderful story that'll fit right in there. <laughs> I've got a story, you see. Not as funny as this no. one. No. The husband said to his wife, Why didn't you mend the holes in my socks? And she said, you didn't buy that fur coat I wanted, so I figured if you didn't give a rep, I didn't give a darn. <laughs> What's that got to do with Ronnie Regan? Well, he wears socks. <laughs> Look, will you listen? Will you listen to my opening, please? Friars, come in. Hello, George. Hello, Gracie. Oh, hello, Harry. Hi, Harry. If you're looking for your wife, here she is. No, no, George. I just dropped by to tell you about the dream I had last night. <laughs> I dreamt that you bought Gracie a 1950 car. <gasps> no. Yes. I dreamt the same thing. No. Yes. Well, Harry Richmond is back with the Dolly Sisters again. <laughs> George. You can all relax. I'm not going to buy a 1950 car. We don't need it would be different if our car was a wreck. It would, huh? Come back here, Grace. <laughs> I wish I had some facts about Ronnie's life so I could finish the speech. Well, I'll go over to his house and interview him for you. Never mind. I'll get the information. Oh, well, you'll be too busy buying me a Cadillac. Come on, Blanche. You can go along and meet Ronald Regan in person. Oh, Gracie! <laughs> Isn't that disgusting? <laughs> Gracie is staying here. And so are you, Blanche. Ronald Regan is nothing to get excited about. He's no different from me. We're both men. We're both flesh and blood. Yeah. 
except you got the flesh and he got the blood. <laughs> Just stay away from Regan's house. Oh, come on, Blanche. Let's go out in the kitchen and have a cup of coffee. Okay, Gracie. Yeah. <laughs> Some acting. Yeah. That wife of yours kills me, George. Imagine thinking she could get a new car with that dream idea. Oh, I don't think she really expected it to work, Harry. She does those things for kicks. <laughs> I remember once. Come in. Uh, Mr. Burns? Yes? Hi, Mr. Brown from Hillcrest Motors. I've got your new Cadillac out front. <laughs> you just sign here, please? I'm not buying a new Cadillac. But... Mr. Burns, I spent all day yesterday with your wife answering her questions, explaining the car to her. Mr. Burns, I've earned this sale. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Do you know what she asked me to do? Put the windshield wipers on the inside so they wouldn't get wet when it rained. <laughs> Well, look, I don't... And listen, all the time she was talking, she kept running the automatic windows up and down. What for? She was cracking nuts. <laughs> well, look, Mr. Brown, maybe in a year or two, I'll buy a car from you. But right now, you can do me a little favor. Like what? Well, you're a salesman, and you listen to lots of speeches. Listen to the opening of this speech and see what you think of it. Okay. <clears throat> Friars, friends, Toastmaster, and honored guest, Ronnie Regan. As I look at our guest of honor, I'm reminded of a story. It seems... Oh, say, I heard a dilly you can use, Mr. Burns. Uh, look, you uh, see, these three old men, 75, 85, and 95, are discussing how they'd like to die. And the first one says, I'd like to get it over fast, crash in a jet plane. And the second one says, I'll take freezing. That's just like going to sleep. And they both turned to the 95-year-old and said, well, how about you, Pop? And he says, I'd like to be shot by a jealous husband. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Brown. Goodbye, Mr. Brown. You know, it sounds like you got a great speech. I'm glad tonight. you like it. Ah. Schmo. Hey, George. George? Yes? I just looked out in the kitchen. Our wives are gone. I'll bet anything they went to Regan's house. Don't be silly, Harry. We gave them orders not to. They wouldn't dare. Yeah, I guess you're right. They wouldn't dare. Of course not. <laughs> Well, here we are, Blanche. This is Ronald Reagan's house. Oh, Gracie, I'm so excited. <laughs> Imagine meeting that big, handsome movie star in person. Oh, well, now, don't expect too much, Blanche. You know, on the screen, they use all kinds of tricks to make those movie stars look good. Makeup and putty and built-up shoes and girdles and wigs and goodness knows what all. You may get quite a shock when you see Ronald Reagan. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? It, no, what did you say? <laughs> well, Blanche, I said, you may get... I said, you may get quite a shock when you see Ronnie Regan. Oh, I don't think so. I've seen him from a distance. What a man. Six feet. There you are. On the screen, you only see two. <laughs> Just ring the doorbell, Gracie. <laughs> You'll see how wrong you are. All right. But don't say I didn't warn you. I've heard about these things, you know. Yes, please, ladies. Uh, this humble person may be of assistance. Well, caught you without your makeup, eh, Mr. <laughs> Regan? <laughs> oh, Gracie. Uh, excuse, please. Me not Mr. Legan. Me, Mr. Legan's boy. His boy, huh? Do you look like your father? <laughs> Gracie, he's not Ronald Regan's son. He's a houseboy. He works for him. Oh. Yes, me, Wong. Well, it's big of you to admit it. 
is that? Is the Mr. Regan at home? No, but I expect him very soon. Uh, please to come in and wait. Oh, we'd love to. <laughs> I'll say. <gasps> Isn't this exciting, Blanche, being in Ronnie Regan's home? Oh, it's like a dream. <laughs> if he walks in that door, I hope somebody pinches me. Well, don't count on it, Blanche. He's a very nice boy. <laughs> Anyway, I can't wait for him to get oh, here. Me. This is Bill Goodwin, folks. Did you or any member of your family have to have a tooth filled last year? And are you still using the same toothpaste you used when those cavities occurred? Well, if that's the case, tell me this. How can you expect to have fewer cavities, less tooth decay, until you change to a toothpaste that has proven it can reduce tooth decay? Give yourself and your children the benefit of that wonderful new discovery, Amadent, the ammoniated toothpaste. Remember, if you're using today the same toothpaste you used a year ago, your toothpaste is not ammoniated. It has not changed its formula to include the new anti-decay ingredients. It can do no more to reduce tooth decay than it did last year. So why not use a little plain common sense? You want fewer cavities for yourself and certainly your children. Change your toothpaste. Change away from the toothpaste that has not been able to prevent the cavities you had last year. Change to Amadent Ammoniated Toothpaste, the toothpaste that has proved it can reduce tooth decay by regular daily use. That's A-M-M-I-D-E-N-T, Amadent. And remember, Amadent toothpaste and Amadent tooth powder are recommended by more dentists than any other dentifrice in America. Back to the home of movie star Ronnie Regan, where Gracie and Blanche are awaiting his arrival. Oh, I just saw him drive in the driveway, Blanche. It won't be long now. Oh, Gracie, I'm so nervous. <laughs> I just know I'll stutter and stammer when I meet him. Oh, now calm down. You'll be all right. But I'll practice my diction. Oh, no, brown cow. <laughs> yeah, I think he'd like it better if you just said hello, Mr. Regan. <laughs> oh, my knees are shaking. I'm going to stand behind this chair so I'll have something to lean on. Oh, Wong, I'm... Well, looks like I have company. How now, brown cow... <laughs> I mean, hello, Mr. Reagan. You're Gracie Allen, aren't you? That's right. And look who's behind the chair. It's George. <laughs> what? Oh, uh, no, this is my friend Blanche Morton. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Please forgive me, Blanche. Uh, is it all right if I call you Blanche? Yeah, I like it better than George. <laughs> Imagine thinking you were a man. Well, it's the fault of the light in here. I'll make it dimmer. <laughs> uh, please sit down, ladies. Now, to what do I owe the pleasure of this visit? Oh, well, we want to find out all about your life, Mr. Reagan. You see, George is going to make a speech at your dinner. Yes, uh, so I've been warned, uh, told. <laughs> well, now, tell me all about yourself, and I'll make notes for George. Very well. I'll start by telling you where I came from. I was raised on a farm in Illinois. Well, that certainly beats California. All they can raise out here is vegetables. <laughs> I meant that my father had a farm and I grew up on it. Oh! I went to a country school. This will sound corny, but I actually had to walk four miles to the schoolhouse. You poor boy. Did you go to college? Yes, I went to college on a scholarship. That certainly beat walking, didn't it? 
Yes. Well, tell me more about the farm. Did you raise any silos? One of the biggest in Illinois, until a cyclone came along. I remember one summer we had three cyclones. Really? Yeah, but we had a good cyclone seller. Oh, he must have been good if he sold you three cyclones. <laughs> well, so much for your boyhood days. Now, I want to know all about you now. How old are you? You mean before we started this interview or now? <laughs> I've aged considerably. Well, uh, how old are you now? A and tell the truth, Mr. Regan. I think it's silly for people to lie about their age. Well, uh, I'd say I'm about your age. Oh, and out of college already? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, tell me some exciting things that have happened to you. Well, I've had a few narrow escapes hunting. See the bearskin rug in front of the fireplace? Yes. Well, that bear charged me. How much? <laughs> He attacked me. If I hadn't gotten him, he'd have gotten me. Oh, well, I'm awfully glad it was him. He makes a much better rug. <laughs> Thanks. Now, is, uh, is that the most nerve-wracking experience you've ever had? Let's say it was the second most nerve-wracking. <laughs> when was the first? It isn't over yet. <laughs> well, um, now tell me all about how you happened to get into the picture. Man. Hi, George. Oh, hello, Bill. I'm glad you dropped by. Would you listen to the opening of my Ronnie Regan speech uh, and, and see what you think of it? Oh, sure, George. <clears throat> but listen, first let me tell you about the dream I had last night. I dreamt that you bought Gracie a 1950 Cadillac. <laughs> yeah, how'd you know? <laughs> You're the fourth dream I've seen walking. <laughs> how did Gracie get you into this plot? Well, she said she'd let me borrow the car to take my girls out. You've got a car. Well, it's a coupe. It only holds three girls. <laughs> got to keep coming back to Hollywood and Vine for a refill. <laughs> well, the new car is out. Well, okay, I did my best. Let's hear the opening of your speech. I think it's pretty funny, Bill. <clears throat> uh, friars, friends, Toastmaster, and honored guest, Ronnie Regan. As I look at our guest, Ivana, I'm reminded of a story. It seems... <laughs> well, go on. Thanks. It seems there were... Hey, I just thought of a... <laughs> Get this, George. A girl was leaving home for the big city, so her mother said... Now, Doris, don't ever let a man come to your apartment because if you do, mother will worry. So the daughter said, okay, Mom, I'll go to his apartment and let his mother worry. <laughs> Doesn't Afra have any straight men? <laughs> now, just relax, George. What are you going to say about Ronnie Regan after your opening? Well, I'll tell about him being the president of the Screen Actors Guild. Oh, yeah, that lucky dog. That's how he gets the girls. What? He got a law passed. Whenever a screen actor gets married, his little black book automatically goes to the president. <laughs> Look at December alone. Jimmy Stewart, Cary Grant, and Clark Gable. He hit the jackpot. Hello, dear. Hello, Bill. Look who I brought back with me. Well, Ronnie, come in. Glad to see you. Hello, George. Hiya, Bill. Hello, Lucky. Uh, <laughs> Ronnie, tell George about the dream you had last night. Oh, yes. Just I tell heard... me the model. I know the rest of it A convertible Thanks I had a wonderful interview with Ronnie George I'll tell you about it as soon as I make us all some tea Good idea, Gracie uh, How would you like it, fellas? I'll take a slice of lemon uh, Just sugar for me I'll take cream Nobody wants tea, huh? <laughs> well, excuse just me Just bring the other stuff, yes <laughs> Ronnie I called Warner Brothers and got all the dope I needed for my speech. Uh, I'm sorry Gracie bothered you. Oh, I didn't mind. But man, how do you stand it every day? <laughs> it isn't easy, once I decided to throw myself under a train. Oh, George, you shouldn't have done it. <laughs> I didn't. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> I'll go, I'll go collect my notes and run through my speech for you. Okay, George. 
Hey, listen, Ryan, I've been waiting to get you alone. What did it take for Gable's book? <laughs> no sale, Bill. But, Ronnie, you've got so many. To date all those beautiful dolls, you'll have to live to be 150. With that incentive, I might make it. <laughs> well, you'd know more about that than I would. You're closer. <laughs> I wouldn't talk, Bill. You're pushing 40. <laughs> well, if I'm pushing it, you're dragging it. <laughs> Are you kidding? The girls are starting to call you the grand old man of Mulholland. Listen, I could take a girl away from you with my hands tied behind me. That's the only way they'll go out with you. <laughs> Ooh, I wish there was a girl here right now so I could... Well, here you are, boys. A slice of lemon and a lump of sugar. Gracie, my romantic technique has been challenged by this character actor. <laughs> Now, just for a minute, would you pretend that you're single? Yes, Gracie, we'll try our techniques on you. Now, forget that you're married to George Burns. But, oh, it takes time to forget a thing like that. <laughs> well... Well, that's long enough. <laughs> okay, Ronnie, you start. Ah, Gracie, you're lovely, beautiful, enchanting. I kiss your hand. Oh. <laughs> All right. Now it's my turn. Oh, you love it, Bill. It tickles. <laughs> no, Gracie. It's my turn to show my technique, my line. What line? Come with me, Gracie. We'll drive through the park. Come with me, Gracie. We'll drive to the ocean and watch the moonlight on the water. We'll go dining and dancing. We'll have champagne and caviar. We'll brush our teeth with amadent ammoniated toothpaste. <laughs> what? You can't top that, Bill. Girls love amadent toothpaste. Wait a minute, that's my line. It leaves your mouth feeling fresh and clean, your teeth bright and sparkling. Amadent is a grand wake-up toothpaste. Ronnie, don't say it so good. I got a living to make. <laughs> More dentists recommend amadent than any other dentifrice. How about it, Gracie? I'll go with you, Ronnie. Oh, no, you won't. If he's furnished an amadent toothpaste, I'm going with him. <laughs> well, Ronnie, I've got my speech all ready. Sit down, everyone, and give a lesson. Okay, George. <clears throat> Friars, friends, Toastmaster, and honored guest, Ronnie Regan. As I look at our guest of honor, I'm reminded of a story. It seems that... Oh, two George, I know a story that'll be great in that spot. <laughs> you like mine, Ronnie. Ah, but wait till you hear this one. A spinster school teacher, sweet 36, and never been kissed, has her first date. Well, the moonlight, a smooth line, the fella kisses her. Immediately, she bursts out crying. She says, oh, how can I ever face those dear, sweet, innocent children tomorrow with two black marks against me? The fella says, what do you mean, two? She says, well, you're going to kiss me again, aren't you? <laughs> Ronnie, that'll never get a laugh. Now, please, everyone, let me do my speech. <clears throat> Friars, friends, Toastmasters... Yeah, I think it's terrible the way everybody interrupts, George. Go ahead, dear. <laughs> Thanks. Friars, friends, Toastmasters... Any man who's nice enough to buy his wife a Cadillac certainly deserves to try out his speech. Go ahead, George. <laughs> Friars, friends, Toastmasters... Probably toast a wonderful speech. Show them, dear. And in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, I can only wish Ronnie Regan the success and happiness that he so richly deserves. I thank you. How long did that run, Gracie? Exactly ten minutes, George, and it's a beautiful speech. Well, thanks for listening to it. Oh, it was a pleasure, darling. Doesn't this new Cadillac ride beautifully? Yeah. Gee, it's swell in the back seat, too, isn't it, Ron? Wonderful. But how come the windshield wiper's on the inside? <laughs> I'll explain that sometime, Ronnie. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
George and Gracie will return in just a moment. Join us again next Wednesday when we'll all be back. George Burns, Gracie Allen, Harry Lubin and the Amadent Orchestra, and yours truly, Bill Goodwin. Brought to you by the makers of Amadent, the ammoniated toothpaste and tooth powder. Recommended by more dentists than any other dentifrice. The George Burns and Gracie Allen program was transcribed in Hollywood, written by Paul Henning, Sid Dorfman, Larry Klein, and Harvey Helm, and produced by William Burns. And now here are our stars. Gracie, next week our guest star will be the Bank of America. The Bank of America? Well, the same thing, Al Jolson. Oh, oh, oh he's wonderful. George, you know that million-dollar robbery back in Boston? Do you think any of that money was Jolson's? No, Gracie. Those armor trucks are too small to carry Jolson's loot. <laughs> the Navy moves his money in battleships. Oh, oh, so that's why the Missouri got stuck in the mud. <laughs> yeah, that did it. See you next week, Jolie. Good night, folks. Girls, it's here. A shampoo you can use with perfect safety when you have a cold. Listen to the man. Wet my hair when I have a cold? Not me. With Minipoo, the marvelous new dry shampoo, you don't have to wet your hair. Minipoo gets your hair shining clean and fresh in only 10 minutes without water. It's quick and easy to use, grand for oily hair, and it doesn't disturb your wave. Sounds wonderful. Where can I get it? At all drugstores. Minipoo, M-I-N-I-P-O-O. Minipoo. Next Wednesday and every Wednesday, listen to the Amadent Show starring George and Gracie. Good night, everyone. for the Lum and Abner Show, which follows immediately. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. That's the Burns and Allen Show, starring George Burns and Gracie Allen with special guest Ronald Reagan, sponsored by Amadent Toothpaste, as heard over CBS January 25th, 1950. Also in the cast, B. Benaderet, best remembered as Kate Bradley, the mom on Petticoat Junction. She also supplied the voice of Betty Rubble on The Flintstones, and Marvin Miller, best remembered for playing Michael Anthony, who handed out checks for $1 million each week on the television series The Millionaire. Next time on the Film Detective Podcast, Jack Mather stars as the Cisco Kid with Mel Blanc as Poncho, so don't miss it. To learn more about this series, visit thefilmdetective.com. See you next time.